Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our thematic focus is engaging the dew of your youth. Engaging the dew of your youth. Maximizing the dew, the freshness of your youth and of your strength. Now, as I'm looking at how to engage the dew of your youth. I felt that I must be giving strong instructions this morning. But as I was searching, I realized that there's a young man like ourselves whom God gave some very, very important instruction on how to engage his youth. On how to maximize his youth. And I thought that it would just be alright. If together with you. We take a very quick uh, analytical study. Of the two letters. That brother Paul an older man. Wrote unto Timothy the young man he picked. Uh, I would like to begin with the natural before I get into the spiritual. Even though the spiritual uh, controls most of the time the natural. But it is very, very important for us even if it is in passing for me to say to you part of what to do to engage the dew of your youth because that is the time when you are highly impressionable that is the time when you absorb the highest you have the highest rate of absorption. You have the highest capacity to learn. It is during this segment of your life that your, your intellectual capacity is free and unclogged so that you can pick principles that might formulate your philosophy of life. And that is why every educational training is first and foremost organized around this deal of your youth. So I must say that for you to become something for God tomorrow, we must engage the day of your youth in a proper, systematic development. Educational development, you need, you need all the grace of God in your life to be educated. I know there is what we call adult education 
which is belated education which is education for those who squandered the deal of their youth or who did not have opportunity but who still need to struggle so we devise something for them and we call it adult education but you know that adult education is a remedial education no matter how uh, the faculty or the department of adult education would like to impress even they themselves know that is adult education it is not education it's adult education <laughs> what does that mean the time set for you to be properly trained and formed is during this deal of your youth let us engage it if we are open to become something for God tomorrow don't plan to be a dropout as a young man if you are not in school simply because of your carelessness after this meeting we will pray you back for your training if it was because you follow friends you ran with a boy who said it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether you go to school or not I will always be for you he's deceiving you he's deceiving you he will soon find someone else who is at that height then you'll be looking at Jessica, you are a disgrace to me and he will walk away and you can do nothing about it he has destroyed your own deal of your youth so this morning before I go further I would like to say to you that the deal of your youth must be engaged for your physical training your physical development your intellectual development, your educational training and development is very critical. The deal of your youth must be engaged in systematic, cumulative development of your capacity. Let me inform you that gambling that is doing probabilities without settling down onto a cumulative progressive and traceable development we only at the end waste the due of your youth if you are supposed to settle down and learn some principles of mathematics and all of you sitting before me here listen there is none of you that cannot do well in mathematics none there is nothing that says your head is not mathematical it's not true it is an unnecessary perception it is what others drummed to your ears and you picked and you collected. It's not true. The truth of the matter actually is that everything that you needed to become the best God had put in there. But if it is not developed within the time that it should be developed, it gets washed away or obscured or contaminated and it does not look as if you don't have it it's there and instead of hoping to be an economist tomorrow and you are running away from JS1 mathematics your dream of being an economist is already a dream it will never come to reality don't listen to those guys that tell you it doesn't matter you can go anywhere without mathematics 
no more in this world. Just settle down and say, God, I know I can have it. It's a necessity that has come upon you. You must catch it. And it is your advantage. Because if you catch your mathematics, even if you want to be an historian, you'll be a better historian. Because you will have enough capacity for analytical uh, a study that will make your history very interesting. You'll be able to deal with the overlap of years and you'll be able to draw deductions and you'll be able to draw conclusions and you are likely to be able to say as I check the timeline of so and so and so and so, I can see an intersection. When you begin to speak like that, you are dealing, you are talking maths. Even an historian will do well if he develops his quantitative ability. All of you, God has blessed you. It's there. But you have to engage it. So engaging the day of your youth, I first of all want to submit to you, engage it physically. Praise the Lord. Even if you are hoping to be the preacher of the word of God, I want to inform you that in the days ahead of you, if you are not educated enough, nobody may listen to you tomorrow. You may have an anointing, but that anointing will be, will be lopsided and locked up because you don't have the capacity to express it. And don't let anybody tell you these things are not important. They are. How many of you know that Moses was highly educated before God called him? Eh? Do you know that? The book of Acts says he was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt and that he was mighty in words. Very, very, very intelligent man. Do you know the college he went? Do you know the college he attended? He attended Government College of Egypt. <laughs> yes. And he went into the university, what they call King's University of Egypt. Only king's children, princes. So while he was on campus, his nickname was Prince Moses. So whenever he's coming, they say Prince Moses. They don't, you know, they don't, they are too lazy to call him Moses. They just say Prince Moses. That's how he was. Several girls were running around him because they just wanted to, 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 to identify with him. He was learned. Very learned. So I was surprised that when God called him, God said, write. Do you know that Brother Moses was a great writer? Eh? All the books that you are reading, the books of uh, Genesis, the books of, uh, of um, Exodus, can you imagine how meticulously that man could write? Towards the end of his life, when he was about to die, he gave a valedictory or what you call inaugural lecture to the children of Israel and he brought reports and he began to say, when we moved there, when we did this, when we did this, I said, wow, very intelligent man. When he was finishing, God said, write a song. Do you know that capacity to compose songs, to write songs, and create correct lyrics is part of training. It's part of training. And you can write songs. 
So what I'm saying to you is that there is nothing wrong to be what? Well trained, well educated, and when are you going to engage it? Now, in your youth. When I say like that, that does not mean that there's a point, there's a segment in any man's life that he cannot study. The, the theory of education say anybody can learn anything at any time, at any age, depending on the presentation. I believe it. But we also know that the, the graph for mental absorption are you understanding is an asymptote the highest of it is in the early years and then what does it do it tapers down towards an infinity there's no time anybody will not learn but your rate of learning reduces with your age They used to say, ah, that boy has a photographic brain. They are only saying that he has capacity to capture things quickly. But when he grows old, you soon discover that you have to say something to him ten times before he sticks. It's because the dew of his youth has finished. Praise the Lord. It is during the dew of your youth that you must acquire personal life disciplines that will be the supporting superstructure for your future. The discipline of when to wake up, the discipline of Never procrastinating anything. Whatever you can do now, don't say I will do it tomorrow. The discipline of knowing when to say it is enough. The discipline of learning to say no. All of this we must carry now that you are young. When all of those are omitted, they become permanent deformity in your future. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Permit me now to take you to the word of God. Can we go? First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4. Are you there? Are you there? Alright. Verse 12 is where I want to begin. Let no man do what? Despise your youth. Let no man now when I use the word to despise, when the Bible said the word despise, what's the meaning of despise? Eh? Look down, disregard, or eh? think less of your youth, devalue your youth, make it look like nonsense if you are going to maximize the due of your youth the first thing I want to say to you let no man do what despise your youth let no man think less of your youth let no man Make your youth, the dew of your youth, a play play thing. Let 
no man make a caricature of your youth what would that mean if you are going to maximize and engage the years or the due of your youth and the first thing let's first read Proverbs 20 verse 14 it is not said the buyer uh -huh. but when he is gone his way then he posted can you get it from another version it is no good it's not good, says the buyer. Good. Good. Did you hear the word of God there? He said the buyer who wants to buy your destiny, who wants to waste your opportunity, what does he say? He says it's not good. It's not good. There's nothing there. So as to get it cheap. When he goes away, what does he do now? He began to brag about a good purchase. I know all of you, you know what I'm saying. Do you know what I'm saying? When you go to market and you want to buy something, the thing is good. It's good. That's why you want to buy it. Am I right? But then, in order to beat down the price, you come before and say, Why all these things? What is in fact? This is not good, though. I'm just trying to help you. That's why I want to buy it. Look at this. Look at this. Then you will go and look for one aspect. Maybe one of the, one of the oranges. That is looking as if it's dry. He said, look at this. In fact, it's all dry. All of them are dry. <laughs> but I just want to pity you. I know you have been carrying it up and down. So take 50 naira. Take 50 naira. If you can't carry it, I don't need it. It's not even useful. When the woman is going to say, okay, bring it. Can I put 10 naira more? So when you have now got it because you devalued it in the eyes of the owner, you go away rejoicing. I got a good bargain. I got a good bargain. Brothers, can I tell you that your youth is the most precious part of your life? Can I tell you that your youthfulness is the most prime time of your life honestly speaking there is no better time in your life than when you are young the reason is because the time of your youth the due of your youth is the time to acquire foundations that will bear the superstructure of your life and your destiny in the future this segment of your life are you hearing me if you get it right is the best because once you get it right now everything else for the rest of your years will be right but you know satan the exploiter will want to despise it will make you look as a when i grow old i will be serious you don't know that <laughs> <laughs> you are, what you are saying is foolish the truth of the matter is that there will be no seriousness in your life again once you miss it here the only thing that will remain after will be tears of regret you will be looking back at irretrievable mistakes and Satan sit somewhere you'll be laughing say that's a good purchase i got that cheap i got that cheap sister 
How many times some of you fell into the strategy of Satan who despised you? He said, look at you. Look at you. Is that how to look? Eh? Kai. I pity the man who will marry you. Hey. See how you are moving, dear, 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 like that. Do you know why? The man has seen something in your life that he wanted to exploit. And he wanted to beat you down so as to hand it over to him cheap. Let no man do what? Despise your youth. That's the first thing. That you're a young man, let me inform you, yes, it is okay that a young man is a novice. There's no problem about that. The truth is that a man who is young, even though he's a novice, because he has age and time to his own side, is better than an old man who does not know something and has no way of knowing it again. Let nobody intimidate you or make or think less of your youth. Now, we said let no man. What of yourself? What of yourself? Don't devalue your youth. I want you to know that every day you wake up and you are checking the time scale of your life and you are still in the youth bracket. That is the greatest investment you have in your hand to determine and to define and to place yourself in a future that God plans for you. Don't take it lightly. Don't take your capacity. Don't take it light. Engage it. The sun that gathers in summer is a wise one. But the one that sleeps during harvest is what? Is a son that causes shame. You will never bring shame to yourself in Jesus' name. You will never bring shame to your family in the name of Jesus. And you will not bring shame to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Let no man despise, think little, devalue, disregard, or make nonsense, or make nothing of your youth. Don't let anybody do it. Don't let a boyfriend do it. Don't let a lecturer do it. Don't allow any of your classmates despise your youth. Don't let them misuse your youth. It's not for that. It's for a future that God is planning for you. Let no man despise your youth. If you have understood that instruction, I will then go from there. Do you think I can go from there? Eh? All right. But, why you don't allow anybody to despise your youth or to look down upon you because you are young or to intimidate you with his uh, Methuselah age? Be thou example. So there's something to do with your youth. That why you don't let anybody despise it, engage it until you become a sample. Engage your youth until you become what? A specimen. Never you agree. For the second place. If the 
Leaders number one. Who should be there? I'm not hearing you. It's me. It's me who must be there. Now, you are not planning to be number one in order to push somebody down. No, 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 no. You have capacity to be number one in your own right. Plan to be the best that you can be. Never you agree with a mediocre mentality. Don't agree. No, no, no. Listen to me. How do I put it now? Don't be contented with weakness. God has not made you weak. What weakens you is a different force. If it was God, it will renew your strengths as that of an ego. Hallelujah. If it was Satan, what will he do? It will deplete your strength. It will scatter you and make sure you are perforated. But if it is God, God is looking for the best for you. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts for what? And not for evil. To give you an expected end. I didn't plan disaster for you. So, plan Rather than anybody despise your youth, intimidate you because you are young, be thou an example. Desire that under God, I want to be a sample. I want to be a specimen. Among my colleagues, I want to be a specimen. In my community, I want to be a specimen. In my chosen career, I desire to be what? A specimen, an example. And among the believers, I want to be an example of the believers. In what? In conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. I want to be an example. When you see a young man who is setting himself to be a specimen for God, every aspect, every, every constituent of his life is being engaged for excellence. If you do not plan to excel now that you are young you are likely to be a dropout on the road now I want to share with you very clearly that engaging the due of your youth does not necessarily mean that you will never either fail of all. But you see, the strength of the youth is such that even when he stumbles, there is something inside of him that bubbles and he can move on. Wherever you find yourself now, it's not your destination, it's a passage. Sometimes as a young man, you tell the devil, you say, devil, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. If I fall, I will do what? I shall rise. If I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. Don't put me aside. Get out. And you jump up. And I say, I, I thought I can, I can nail this young man to the coffin. I thought I can bury him in the pit of depression. But he's springing up and going. 
is likely to be a champion tomorrow if I don't catch him. May God help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Paul was writing to a young man. And he was saying, give attention to reading. Every time I'm looking at that scripture, I say, ah, ah. I know that the generation in which we are now, you don't read. You like to watch. You want to watch movie. You want to watch. You want to just plug something in your ears and be dancing to yourself. You get lost on the road because you are disconnected. Why that is all right at a level it is not sufficient to build a future. Give attention to what? Reading. Read solid things that will formulate strong foundation for your future and for the man, the woman God is planning you to become. He said, give attention to exhortation and to doctrine. This is the time to learn the doctrine of our God. This is the time to absorb solid, systematic teaching that you can fall upon, you can leverage upon as you go in life. You need to come and open some of our stomach and see volumes of biblical doctrine that we sat down and confronted us with in our youth. Unfortunately, in our own time, your own generation, even your pastors, they are not interested in teaching anything. You go to church on Sunday morning, we sang and sang and danced and did like this, did like this, did like this, did like this. Then the man of God comes and I say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Actually, as I was just um, ruminating on what I would say today, the Lord said, I should just, I should just dace you with miracles. I dace you with miracles. There's somebody here. You've been trying to pass economics 101. <laughs> Just says the Lord. Weep no more. Weep no more. Economics 101 is finished. You passed it. But there's something you need to do. What is the name of that course? 101. <laughs> you must sow a seed. And the seed has to do something like 101. You are the one who needs to determine what the first one stands for. And as I can see, it is 1,100 and one naira. And you will see foolish boys. <laughs> They'll be running. One of you has been sitting down there. This is the third disappointment you have received in three months. Tell yourself, I am not a disappointment. You see that? Everybody is excited. Let me ask you, which Bible verse did you read? 
nothing. So you see, you don't know that they are damaging your future because they are packing nothing. They are just filling you with charm. They are filling your own foundation with ordinary sawdust. It will collapse. You can't bear any structure. When did you go for Bible study? And they said for the next four weeks, we are dealing with the second coming of Christ. And we are doing studies upon studies. And we are reading this one. We are coming here. It's okay. Let us turn to the book of Daniel. And from Daniel, let's go to Matthew 24. And from 24, we go to First Timothy. And Timothy said, in fact, in fact, uh, uh, Peter also spoke like that. And then we are going around before we land in Revelation. Just to take in solid word of God. This is the time to engage it. This is the time you have capacity to study. Don't let anybody fill that space with emptiness. If you are planning to become great for God, engage this deal of your youth. Give attention to doctrine. What is the next thing? Neglect not the gift of God in your life. May I say to you brothers before I go from there that you see for what heaven wants you to become tomorrow there are endowments there are investments and there are gifts that God is already placing in your life. But they will never come out unless it is exercised. And the exercise is not first on any particular gift. In fact, you may never discover your gift until you go into what I call generalisms. Don't let anybody confuse and say, you know, you need to specialize. You need to specialize. Somebody is telling a primary one student that he needs to specialize if he wants, if it is a, a, a composition he likes. Let him specialize in composition. And so when we are doing comprehension, I say, no, that's not my specialization. He walks out. Is that child going to become anything? You don't specialize at the beginning of your life. You generalize first. You must be given a wide exposure to everything. And it is as you begin to exercise your life that the peculiarity of your life will begin to show forth. You may never discover your peculiarity until you are first of all immersed in generalities. Peculiarities only come out out of a column of generalization. When you, genera when you are a general, there's nothing we are talking about that you don't know a bit of. That's why I don't want you, you young man, to go and put yourself under a preacher who is a specialist in demon casting. That's not all about Christian life. Don't go and locate yourself and the man that say, Yes, sir. Hallelujah. My anointing is prosperity. When you come here, we make you prosperous. We turn you onto millionaires. I don't care how you look. I don't care whether you have prayed or not. God said you are blessed. And that is all you know. You are not planning for a future. You are already 
planning your life on a small narrow base and you want something like this, how can it work? All of you look up. Can you see that cone? Did you see that cone? Eh? On top of this building. Did you see it? What is the principle? What's the principle? Did you notice that the whole of that has been sustained? You can't see pillars here. Did you see pillars here? No. It was deliberately designed that you will have a very wide base that is shooting forth at a convenient angle such that the resolution of forces will bring balance. But you see, if... No problem, no problem, no problem. Thank you. Now, whereas if we had inverted it and we put the cone on the ground here and we are Where is the force that will have sustained that largesse that you are planning for since there is no foundation for it? If you begin with narrowness, you can never hope to end with largeness. If you do not expose yourself to the whole counsel of God, there is no hope that there will be enough foundational issues that can bear you up when you want to now climb high. There will be no space. So, when he said, give attention to doctrine, is part of preparing you for that glorious future. Study widely. You saw yesterday when we were looking at the qualification they were putting to get Daniel and all of them, they said, those that have read how widely. Don't narrow yourself. And particularly in the things of the, Lord, of the Holy Spirit, don't narrow yourself. Do not neglect the gift of God in your life by disuse, by lack of exercise. Whether I was going to be an evangelist, whether I was going to be a special demon caster, whether I was going to be uh, a pastor or whatever, that was not my concern. There's no demon some of you are casting out now that we have not cast out before. We did. Uh, we did. There's nothing you know that we did not know. We went all through that. Sometimes we are spending three nights just on one demon. <laughs> and you know we are thinking, yes, it's the work of God. Yes. Uh, the demon said, I will not go, I will not go. I said, you will go, you will go. Sometimes the demon will start dancing for us. I said, let me tell you, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. He said, you, you will go in the name of Jesus. You will go in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we will gather around and be singing the blood of Jesus, 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 the blood of Jesus. Just for one demon. Now, all of that, as far as I'm concerned, is exercise. <laughs> it's exercise. Whether the demon goes out or he does not go out is not the problem. It's an exercise. Eventually, eventually, whether it is by tiredness or by the anointing, the girl will fall down and say, yeah! you say yes! Yes, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. Get up, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> it's okay. 
exercise. And as we are doing that, one brother will go and pull out a scripture and say, Thus says the Lord, woe unto him that strives with his maker. Yes. You are striving with your maker here. Aha. It's okay. Engage in spiritual exercise that calls forth the grace of God in your life. Am I communicating with you? If they announce that there's a mission, mission outreach. We went there. We trekked kilometers into the bush. When we got there, they said, Brother Billy, you had wanted to preach. I said, but you have not told us before. I said, well, they didn't tell us. The Bible says, when you get there, open your mouth, I will feel it. <laughs> so we just go there, shivering, 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 Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, what will I say now, oh God? And I did not know I was going to preach. Say, go there, go there. So when you go there, you just open your mouth, say, Lord, you say, open your mouth, I will feel it. <laughs> You know, some of you thought those things are a waste. No! We began to learn how to depend on the Holy Spirit because of exercise. Exercise. Neglect not the gift of God that is in you by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear to all. He was talking to a young man. He said, meditate. Give yourself wholly to these things. Commit yourself to it so that your profiting may appear to all. Very soon people will start seeing you know your progress. They start seeing the grace of God in your life. They start seeing, you know, God working in you. And they begin now to recognize it. Now follow me to chapter 1 of Second Timothy. I better read from verse 12, 13 for you, up to 14. For the which cause I also suffer these things, Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to do what? To keep that which I have committed to him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto you, what should you do to it? Keep by the Holy Ghost which dwells in us. Hold fast. You see, there is no other way to maximize, to engage the dew of your youth than not to allow you to dissipate. There's no other way to get the best of what God wants to do with your life than to hold tenaciously, say, hold fast to these foreign words which you have heard. There is no other magic. What you are hearing now is what we have heard. And if you follow it, God is faithful. He's going to help us. He's going to take you from one height to another in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold fast. When they say hold fast, that means hold tenaciously. Don't let it loosely fall out of your hand. And that good thing that God has committed to you. What should you do with it? Keep it. 
Don't sell it out. Don't exchange it. Esau was that man that sold his own birthright. And afterward, when he was not looking for the reward, the Bible said he sought for it with tears. Nobody gave him. Praise the Lord. Chapter 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in what? In the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In order for the dew of your youth to translate unto the glorious manifestation of the purpose of God for your life, the grace that has been made available to you now, what should you do with it? Make most of it. Be strong in it. Don't play around with it. And the things which you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men. But there are few words that a young man must never miss in life. Can I put it to you? Would you like to hear me? Thou therefore endure what? May I tell you if your pursuit at this age is enjoyment, you will have biscuit bones at old age. Did you hear me? You are not hearing me. I said, if your pursuit as a young man is enjoyment, at old age, rather than have a backbone, what are you going to have? Biscuit bones. Those who wake up in life to eat, to enjoy, to drink. Those who never, never experience the training, the releasing of inner strength out of hardship, out of challenges, they never realize their potential all of life. No, there's a potential in them, but because what normally toughens a man, what toughens and releases your muscle and develops you is always a force. When you did not engage it, you can never develop. So our brother said, endure what? Now, he didn't call it hardship in my old King James. He called it hardness. For me, even though modern English you say hardness and hardship is the same. But I don't think they are the same. What that brother is dealing with was that look, look for hard things to crack. Eh? Don't look for walkovers. I think my teacher was very, very careful. When he discovered that I was one of his best students in mathematics, whenever he gave us sums to solve, what he expected would take 30 minutes. I will finish it in five minutes. And I will be disturbing the rest of the class. So he said, Billy, have you finished? Are you sure? When I bring it to him, he will mark me 100 over 100. There's nothing he can remove. He said, okay, come. Then he will now open 
C.V. Durell of those days had that questions. When I say, go and solve this one. <laughs> Those harder questions, I will be sweaty. You know, sweat will be dropping on my paper. And I've not got it. My head is just, my head is paining him. And the man says, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can do it. Sometime I will we will close school and I've not finished. I've not got answer to it, and I cannot sleep. I said, excuse me, sir, I'll come to your house in the evening because that problem I've not been able to solve. It's okay. No, no, don't come to my house. Keep trying. Tomorrow morning we will meet. Ah! I knew what he was doing to me. He was calling something out of me. Don't always eat what your teeth crashes like banana. You will never develop a, a strong teeth that way. If you want your teeth to develop, crack bones. Try to chew some, go, some bones. Stop dipping your teeth inside the sugar. It will weaken it. So what am I saying? Endure what? Hardness. Hardness draws something out of you. It develops your capacity far beyond your, what you are thinking. So every hard situation, don't run away. You're a young man. Every challenging situation, don't withdraw. Go there. God is arranging it to call you forth. There's a giant in you that is lying dormant. The only thing that can call it forth is hardness. Stop looking for soft ground. May God deliver you from softness. If you keep dealing with softness all your youth, you will be a mere soft, soft, I don't know how to call it now. You just be one soft like that. That whenever the devil wants to do, you just do pinkle and you are gone. Endure what? Hardness. I used to wonder why when they were training soldiers, why their training was so difficult. I remember one time we were coppers. I don't know whether coppers are still doing that kind of training. They were doing paramilitary training for us. And then they put this drum buried on the ground. And they said, we're going to run and pass through that place. Ah, I say, a homie, how will I enter that? No. When I know there's another road I can take and come in front like this, how can I go through under a tunnel like that? The first time when the squadron leader was not watching, I just <laughs> I just came. Then I joined the the people that are going. He said, Billy, come back, come back, come back, come back. I said, Did you pass through that? I said, Well, I thought I thought those of us that are tall, <laughs> we don't need to go through that. He said, No, go back, go back. They making life difficult. They want to toughen you for your assignment. As a young man, stop looking for softness. All those people that are making you feel it is a glory of God that uh, you know me and they go suffer, and they give up for free. Of course, I know what he's planning you to be. He wants you to be a vegetable. This 
How do you engage the day of your youth? God will allow you to go through hardness. This hardness is not a punishment. It's a training. This hardness is not because God cannot provide. It's that God is training. He said, God suffered you to hunger so that you may know that man does not live by bread alone but by every word. The Bible said, even for Jesus, the captain of our salvation, God thought it necessary that he must be made perfect, must be fully equipped for his assignment through the things he suffered. May the Lord give you understanding of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. No man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. In order to maximize and engage the dew of your youth, you must avoid entanglement. What Satan wants to do is to entangle you before you find your direction in life. He wants you to be wrapped up with many, many things that have no meaning and no bearing for where you are going. In our Bible study, we said, as soon as you become a child of God, you are a soldier. We're going to emphasize that again. And as a soldier, prepare yourself. Endure hardness. Don't get entangled with civilian affairs. Praise the Lord. Right. Go with me now to verse 15. Study. To do what? To show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Eminius and Philetus who concerning the truth have heard, saying that the resurrection is already past, and overthrew the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God does what? Standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. Let me draw one issue out of this. When the word you study, actually, other version says, work hard. Be diligent. To show yourself unto God, approved, a workman that need not to be ashamed. If there's any time to labor for qualification, is it not this time? Eh? All of you that are going to school, maybe in secondary school, university, what are, you, what are you laboring to get? What are you laboring to get? Qualification. So that when you stand looking for placement, you are qualified for it. And I'm hearing God also saying, now that you are young, do your best to win God's approval for your life. Study to show yourself a workman approved unto God. A man that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, in order to become the best for God, this is the time. This is the time to win God's approval. This is the time to pray all the prayers you know how to pray and say, God, 
Don't pass me by. Don't let me miss out on what you want my life meant for. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. They were talking to a young man and say he should be able to rightly divide the word of truth. And I would say, oh God. Not when he had become a mighty theologian in his uh, early 60s or 70s. God is saying, now study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that need not to be put to shame. Amen? Amen? But while we are talking about that, young people, listen. And I think I had to speak to you clearly on this. The Bible said, but shun profane and vain babblings. There are many babblers uncoordinated talkers who open their mouth to say anything they, they, that comes on their mouth without thinking. And there are others that are calculated deceivers. They have planned how to psychologically exploit you. They have known how to arrange high sounding words to impress ignorant people like yourself. He comes around, he's shaking his body here and there and I'm listening to him. What is he going to say? And I've listened for 30 minutes, he has said nothing. Vain babblers. If you are going to maximize your own opportunities, you must avoid them. We have to be very clear to you. You must select who you listen to because it is your future that you are, you are dealing with. The Bible talks about People who overthrow the faith of some by their words. Say their words will eat like a canker. And what they call canker in the Oaking James was cancer. It's like a cancerous words. That when it is lodged on your heart, it leaves you damaged for a long time. Many of them have formed fellowships around you. Many of them, their interest is not about where you are going. It's about themselves, about their pockets, about their own money. Even as their students with you on campus, look at the level of life they are living. At the expense of your own tithe and offering. But they have brainwashed you to make you believe that it is to God. That when you do that, some will tell you and say, even your school fees, sow a seed. He said, the woman of Sarifat, the only thing she had left, she gave to the man of God. Even if what remains in your pocket is your school fees, so it! And then in another 100 days, you get 100 forward. I wonder where that calculation comes. So that's how your own school fees has landed in the pocket of a greedy man. And you are likely to be crying to your parents. You won't cry to God. It's your parents you are still going to talk to us. And then you have to tell lies about certain uh, test book that you have to buy. Sister, avoid vain talkers. Shun profane and vain babblings. 
their words. You know when the Bible said their words eat. It was then I began to realize that words of these men have great effect. You will have been acting on what they say without you thinking. And you have been uprooted. In the same way when you go to Titus, he said, he said some people smart has to be stopped because they have unsettled many families with their teachings, with their words. They may take one Bible verse somewhere and extrapolate it. Contrary to all the systematic counsel that the word of God gives. As a young man, in order to maximize and engage the day of your youth, you must engage it with the truth. Praise the Lord. Was he not one of the teachings that was being taught in one of these universities that made girls to agree to be sleeping with their ESCO members? Because the man told them that said, you are in the spirit. You are spirit. Fornication is a sin in the body. But you are already in the spirit. And a spiritual person has no problem. Whatever happens to his body. When this girl came and was telling me this, and you know she was very bold to come and say, Privile. I said, Yes, sir. She walked to my wife and said, Why are you making life difficult for people? <laughs> you know, very bold. I said, Like how? He said, You are saying flee fornication. That all those who are involved in morality, they will go to hell. You are making life difficult. As far as I know, fornication is not, is not the sin of the spirit. You know, I don't know whether to slap her. Because I slap her, they say, Black Billy is beating a girl. So, I, I stood. I was shivering. I said, where did you get that? And she was bold. He said, let us turn our Bible to. <laughs> so you know, I also went there. I, because curiosity now, I wanted to know where she got it. And I discovered that the passage she was going to read is the same passage that said, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Whosoever destroys the temple of God, the same shall be destroyed. And that every sin that any man sin, but if a man will sin the sin of immorality, he has committed sin against his body, which is the temple of God. Ah. So I say, how did you read the scripture? And you have arrived at what you are doing. So it's a new revelation. It's a new revelation. I say, which revelation? So you see, you know, what is touching me that I'm reporting to you is the fact that the words of this man ate this girl so deep like cancer. So I say, so what are you doing? He said, well, that's why when we go in, we pair up. In fact, uh, ah, I say, so you have been sleeping about with these boys? He said, well, because it's not when the spirit, when the spirit, when we finish it, we just speak in tongues. Now, abominable, abominable doctrines that has destroyed many lives, that has that has cancelled the destiny of so many.
these words, when the Bible says they eat as a canker, you may think it's a joke. No, 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 no. Jesus says, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. Am I correct? In the same way, when you feed on error, when you feed on a wrong doctrine, it has a way of eating you deep and destroying you. Before I could get that, get delivered from that spirit, it was serious. And she came all the way from Joss to come and say, I'm going to talk to Bragbele. So I sat down there two, three hours. I thank God, you know, rightly dividing the word of truth. I was going from this passage to that. I said, okay, leave Second Corinthians. Let's go to First Corinthians. Know you not that warmongers, uh, those who spoil themselves with women, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. What of this? What of this? What of this? By the time we, she said, hey? But they didn't tell us like that. I said, why didn't you read your own Bible? Now that you are young, because it is part of your deal to want to learn new, new things. Anybody who can say something better in your ears may likely captivate you. I hope you know that all the false doctrines, they only thrive among the youth. So as God is talking about how do you engage the deal of your youth? Engage it with the truth and not with error. Don't let error underlay the foundation of your life. It will be difficult for you tomorrow. Don't accept any statement that you cannot personally prove not only with one scripture, but with entire counsel of God. Stop going to fellowships where your inner soul is not being addressed. I'm talking to you because I hope you are planning to be great for God. Am I correct? Eh? Some of you may be as I don't like that. And I see you shaking your head like this. Don't worry. Don't worry. There is a man called Olokwada. <laughs> when we go to the farm that time, he carries his own cutlass that is not sharpened. Eh? A blunt one. We say, come and sharpen this so that we can cut that. We say, no, 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 no. I like my blunt ash. So when we have gone for farm, and all the people that came with sharp knives, sharp matches, when they have finished their work, who look wider, is still busy. Then go! He thinks they go and sharpen yourself first before you come. Go! So at the end, the local proverb says, it is at the end that Olokwa that goes home with regrets. May you never end your journey with regrets. Yeah. What we are saying to you, we have proved it. It has worked. We have many years, decades of years to tell you about the faithfulness of God and the sincerity of the word of God. We have several years behind us to show you that what God says is true and God is faithful to his word and anybody who follows him, he will not be put to shame. We are living witnesses of that. But it's only a foolish man that says, 
let me go and make experiment with my irretrievable life. Words that are not wholesome, they have a way of penetrating into the fabrics of your soul and they may make you eternally weak and internally defeated. I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, now that you are young, now that you have capacity to learn, now that you are hungry, now that you are excited, and now that you have capacity to absorb, be careful what you load into your system. Be careful the viruses that somebody is transferring to you. It might never manifest until it has crippled you. Praise the Lord. But now look at the word of God, nevertheless. The foundation of God does what? Stand as sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ do what? The word is depart. What's the meaning of the word? Depart. To depart means part ways with iniquity. Separate yourself from every form of iniquity. Iniquity cuts a man short. Iniquity will cut you short. No matter how they package iniquity, iniquity will cut you short. No matter who is telling you that it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Sin kills. It doesn't matter who is saying, well, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. No. When he wants to be serious, ask him whether he himself is living well. You will soon discover that he is only a camouflage. Every one of you that want to go far with God, depart from what? Whatever form of iniquity, depart from it. Whether iniquity of the internet, mental iniquity, intellectual iniquity, psychological iniquity, motivational iniquity, any form of iniquity, those of you that want to go far with God, depart from iniquity. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold or silver, but there are also of wood, of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man Therefore, purge himself from these. It shall be what? A vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto what? Every good work. Brother, don't accept to be a man of ignoble use. Don't set to to become one of these non-entities that heaven doesn't know where to place. If you will purge yourself, if you will separate from yourself every dross, every contamination, everything that, that weakens 
a man's character inside. If you will touch yourself and stand apart and depart from iniquity, you will surely become a vessel of honor. God will use you for something good. I will hear your voice tomorrow. You don't know how, how joyful I am when I sit back and I see the people that God has affected. How they are doing well for God. How they are breaking forth. How God is working with them. I say, yes, Lord, you are faithful. It is going to be your turn tomorrow. When God will gather nations even to you. Yes, why not? It's a very, very, it's, God is going to do it. He will do it. But now, in this view of your youth, engage it properly. You can be a vessel of honor. We were talking about men that could stand before kings. We are talking of those that God is planning to take to the highest place. Prepare yourself for that. Say, so, but if you purge yourself from these things, you become a vessel unto honor. Let me read that again. He said, if a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. You know, sanctify means set apart. Eh? Kept in store. And meet for the master's use. And prepared unto every good work. If to say you don't have a, a, a future, I would have said, well, okay. but you are a man that heaven is saying, prepare them well. There's a future for them. God will help you in the name of Jesus. Flee. Also, youthful lusts. And I was wishing time has not left me. I would have sat down here to be looking at what is youthful lusts? What's the lust of the youth? There are certain things the Bible calls youthful lusts. There are lusts that are for adults. But there are lusts that are peculiar to the youth. They are the things that you see all your age mates are gravitating for. Youthful lusts. Say, flee also youthful lusts because you're a young man. But follow righteousness. Once they use the word flee also youthful lusts, but that means all that we're going to read now is a direct opposite. And you will remember that you met this same kind of verse in chapter 4 of First Timothy verse 12. When he said, let no man despise your youth, but be thou. Do you remember that? Now he says, flee also youthful lusts, but follow what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Faith. Charity. Peace. With them that do what? That call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Follow those who are following God. Keep company with people like us. Who are calling on God with a pure heart. You've been here now for these few days. Has anybody swindled you of your money? Talk to me. Eh? Have we been selling anointing oil? Why can't you follow men of sincerity? 
Why can't you decide and say, ah, I am seeing people. There are professors among our resource persons and they are simple and they are doing well. Follow them. There are brothers here whom God is making business uh, tycoons. Some have been deputy VCs and all of that. Heads of department, deans of faculties and people. Why will you follow people that are going nowhere? Eh? Why do you want to follow a girl who has had four abortions? What, is, what do you want to get from that kind of Korunfo girl? Ah. Why will you waste your own youth, your own due on someone who is already expired? Flee youthful loss. But follow righteousness. Follow faith. Charity. Peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Look at us. How can you say you are following a pastor who has divorced his wife twice? Are you praying that you will marry and you will you become a divorcee? Talk to me now. So why will you follow a man like that? Wouldn't you have told him and said, excuse me, you are not an example of believer. I will not come to your church again. After all, it was you who carried your leg there. It was not that you were converted there. Why do you follow people that are going nowhere? How can you follow a man to his dungeon? Brother Paul said, Look at us! He said, Follow my example and mark those who walk like we do. For there are many people whose God is their belly. Who don't have hope of going anywhere again. They are just looking for what to eat from your hand. Time has come for us to begin to instruct you properly. So that the future that God has for you. You will maximize it. You will get at your destination. And when it has happened. You will give glory to God. It's not as if we need anything from you. We don't need anything. The Lord we serve has been our God. He has met our need. We are not doing youth congress so that uh, you can be bringing money to us. That's not the matter. We are talking about you entering your inheritance. We are trusting God that you will be why you were born and why you were born again. We are praying that what will give us joy? What, are, what do I want to eat from you? What will fill my stomach? Is when you are doing well. When you are walking in the truth. When you are taking a stand out there. When I hear that, oh, that sister, that brother has gone to Australia and they are shaking the land. When I'll be told that the professor in that university in Canada, he is a child of God and he came for student congress and his life was affected. That's what I'm going to be happy about. When somebody will grab me and say, we met another man like you, sir. There was one young man that was preaching like you. And we asked him, did you know Brother Billy? Say, ah, that's my father in the Lord. That's when I'll be excited. That's when we will be excited. That by the grace of God, you will carry this fire. You will carry this message. And you will become a terror to the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they only gender strive the servant of the law must not strive but be gentle unto all men able to teach patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth as I ask you to stand in prayer you are going to say to God this, this life you gave me it will maximize your glory whatever the devil is doing whatever he is working at I stand to declare this morning I will not bow I will not bow the knee I am caught for glory. I'm not going to be a casualty. God has captured me and captivated me and I'm going to be a captain in the army of the Lord. Not, not a casualty. We're praying. Open your mouth. Stretch that hand to heaven and say, God, not a casualty I want to be. Not a dropout I want to be. Not a disgrace to the kingdom of God I want to be. I determine, O oh God, in your name to run and not become weary by the working of your spirit in my life. I'm going to see the power of God at work. I'm going to break forth to see the glory of God breaking in my generation. I will not let anybody despise my youth. Declare this morning as you are praying, no one will despise my youth. No one will take my youth for granted. No one will cheap on my life as if it meant nothing. You are an heir. You will not be inherited by anything. The purpose of God for your life must come to pass. Masataya Makando Rubuskamba Rabashiva. Zemuros. Imbataura Kabakondo Rubusamba Rabashiria. This day we must pray together. My life must never waste. Bisharia la bacanto rubuscuria. You will not keep company with those that are going nowhere. Call on God this morning and say, Father. All the gifts that you are placing me for my future, the vulture will not take it away. Youthful loss will not evacuate it. Even though the devil has divorced so many youth, God has arisen. You are going to be arrows in the hand of God. You are saying, Father, whatever it will take, I'm going to be a vessel unto honor in your hand. A vessel unto honor, O God. Basata Yama Kando Roboskuri. Zima Rama Mama 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 Kante Yeroboskuri. Zobari Katao Yama Kante Gezebo Roboshiria. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We know you're going to help us now. Basiara Bashanto Korobo Samba Ramashanda Baba. Say, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. God has a foundation. Go 
God is not joking with his foundation. Anyone that named the name of Christ must depart from iniquity. Foundation for greatness. Foundation for spirituality. Foundation for a glorious future. Foundation for an enduring anointing. Foundation for you to affect your generation and cause the will of God to pass. This is the time to lay it. And that foundation, the one that will not shake, come back, come back rubbish on it. You can't fill your foundation with emptiness. Tell God this afternoon, Father, my foundation will not be the kind I can shake. Thank you, Father, this moment. Holy Spirit, we ask you to please undertake for us. In Jesus Christ's name, we are prayed. Brothers, sisters, we are praying. Do you know that each one of you can become a vessel unto honor? Do you know that God, in his determinate counsel, has not planned you to be a mediocre? God is not a, a, the one who wants to deplete you and weaken you even in your youth. It's the enemy that has done this. But I hear God standing in our midst today and saying, that extent to which he has gone, he can go no more. Yeah. All those that have been weakened, those that have been crippled, the Lord is going to raise you now in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you that you are supposed to be a firebrand, but you are becoming a smoky flax. Your life is just bringing out bad smoke. But God has said he will not quench the smoking flax. He will rather blow on it until you become fire again in the name of Jesus. God has said he will not turn away the lame feet. You are supposed to have your two feet to run for God. You are too young to be a lame. And this afternoon, all those that are lame in their feet, God is going to speak to your ankles. And you are going to rise to Rome from this meeting in the name of Jesus. Those that have been taken out of the highway, you are now walking in the corner, corner of life. You are ashamed of the things that have been happening to you. This morning, God is restoring you to the highway of holiness. You are going to walk shoulder to shoulder with your colleagues in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you are going to pray. Just lift up your hands and you keep praying. Say, God, your vision for my life will not become a mere smoke. What you intend me to be, I will walk into it. The extent you want to go with my life, Father, I will get there. Whether Satan likes it or not, whether the devil likes it or not, I will be what you have called me to be. Basata Yamakando Robo Samaraba Shiria. I want you to go and pray and say, My youth will never be wasted. Now that God had opened my eyes, now that God has drawn me, now that the Holy Spirit has called me aside. My youth will never be wasted. I am for signs and for wonders. Say the children that you have given me, they are for signs and for wonders. Pasata Yabakandu Saila. 
Lord, ma 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 ma, kaura ba shanda ba kaura, rema saila bata jaba kondo, reme saba ba yata kasende kile busura. Lord, I'm asking. Let the heavens be opened. Let the heavens be opened. I say, let the heavens be opened. Father, let the heavens be opened over these lives, over these hearts, over these young men and women. From this afternoon, God, create in them hunger for God, hunger for the truth, hunger for reality. Create in them hatred for iniquity, hatred for iniquity, hatred for empty talk. From this afternoon, you are going out on fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow, follow Jesus. I have decided. I will follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Now the Bible says, if any man will purge himself from this, he shall be vessel unto honor sanctified sanctified meet for the master's use prepared unto every good work this afternoon or this morning yet say if any man will purge himself from the things are you still standing there and you have not purged yourself of every form of immorality every form of iniquity every form of underhandedness anything that you cannot be bold to talk about anything that you cannot proudly say that i am doing it is time to purge it this afternoon In the name of Jesus. Now we are going to pray finally. And this final prayer means any iniquity that you know that you have abhorred maybe for the last two, three times you have thought, well, I can explain it away. No. God said, let him depart from iniquity. Iniquity may be that boyfriend. You thought you are marrying, you want to marry Mr. Iniquity? What do you want to become? Iniquity may be that girlfriend. Iniquity may be that, that lesbian partner. That is not why you were born. That's not why God raised you up. Why you are offering your life to God in this meeting? You are saying every iniquity depart from me, depart from me. In case you have not done it, just step out before God and say, Today I depart deliberately from every iniquity. I depart. It doesn't matter whether they will they will make jest of me or they will laugh at me or whatever. I depart. I want to pursue my destiny now. I want to pursue why I was born and why I was being born again. I want to pursue it now. Even if 
that Mr. Iniquity is the one that pays your school fees. What do you want to do with a degree that you collect in iniquity? Can that make you great? Can that take you to glory? This afternoon you are saying, I say no to iniquity. God bless you. Let's pray. Let's pray quickly. If you want to step out, do that in one minute. If you are saying, ah, I depart from iniquity. Sometimes iniquity looks lucrative. Sometimes it appears as if it's something. But this morning God is saying, the journey I'm taking you, you can't combine it. Several people have made decisions, God is helping them, but you have not made your own. You thought maybe I can manage it, you can't manage iniquity. Every sin you did not confess is a sin you have planted. When it begins to germinate, it will produce much more than you are thinking. If you are coming wrong, wrong place, because we have to move now. We need the help of the Almighty God in this meeting. The dew of your youth, how can it be wasted? with iniquity. Thank you, sister. God bless you. Just go on your knees. God bless you. God bless you. And say, God, this meeting is my turning point. This morning is my turning point. This hour is the hour for my turnaround. God bless you. God bless you. Do quick. Maybe yesterday night or day before or in the afternoon, the Lord spoke and spoke, but your heart was, was closed. You say, well, I'm thinking. The Holy Spirit said, today is that day. God bless you. Are you coming still? Thank you, my dear sister. Just run. Just run. Just run. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My brother, run. Just run down. Run down. Yeah? Just run down quickly. Thank you. Thank you, young sister. Holy Spirit. Please stretch forth your hand anywhere else where you are. Let's begin to pray for ourselves now. Let's begin to say, oh God, the thing that caught me short will not cut me short. Iniquity that has reduced many. Father, I lay you down today. Just say, Jesus, I have come to you. Just as I am, I have come to you. Maybe in your church, they have not told you about this. You never thought that you should repent like this. Just come out quickly. Thank you, my dear sister, my brother. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Just come. If you are coming, you must do that quick. Thank you, friend. Yes, 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 quickly. Thank you. Just do it quickly. Quickly. Heaven is crying. How can Satan take advantage of a life that heaven is planning to use? Thank you, dear. Thank you. And today is a new day for you. Aye. Aye. No Jesus, keep a rat, take a rebel, Sambara machine, Masabara Bashan, take a rebel, Skumboro Bushi. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. My friend, come down quickly. Come down quickly. Thank you, come down quickly. Thank you, there. Come down quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Likatoria. Holy Spirit, do this work now, Lord. Begin to purge every dross, every layer of iniquity. Some have been hidden for years, and you thought you can go on. As you bow before God this morning, heaven is going to do a deep work. So we do a work in your midst. The ears of those who hear will tingle. God bless you right away. 
God bless you right away. In the name of Jesus. Talk. It's all right. If you are not already kneeling in this altar because you are hiding one iniquity or the other, I don't know what you mean, whether you are daring the Almighty God. But now, those of you kneeling, please stretch forth your two hands. Just lift up your two hands. Lift it up. God is going to have mercy. Restoration is coming on your way today. A rekindling is coming on your way today. A change of heart, a change of life is coming on your way. Chains of iniquity have been broken in the name of Jesus Christ. The stony heart is being taken out. And the heart of flesh is being replaced. The cleansing flood of the blood of Jesus is coming. Taking away all layers of iniquity. With all its repercussions. In the name of Jesus Christ. From this hour, Father. You said those who come to you, you will in no wise cast out. Lord, mercifully consider each one of us. And please, Lord, in, in mercy, pardon our hearts. Pull off every form of iniquity today. Dissolve it in the blood of the Lamb. Change our garments. Change the garments. Take away the rags. In the name of Jesus Christ. From this hour, oh God. Do something new now. Something eternal in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, today, some have been here kneeling down and the devil is saying, I will not let you go. But this afternoon, you're hearing the word of God. Thou who, who releases the captive of the mighty, Release them now in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, by the reason of the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. That yoke on your life for this number of years, we break it in the name of Jesus Christ. We break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, you are yoked into a wrong fellowship. Places where the little fire you had, they quenched it. They lure you back into your old ways. And they told you it doesn't matter. Father, this afternoon, as your word is piercing through our hearts, all such alliances, all such ships that is carrying your men back to Tarshish, we ask right now, Take them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Creating them a different hunger for you. A different thirst for your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, please watch over these lives. Every instruction that we need to give them. So that they can maximize the due of their youth. Please release unto them. Some have come out one time, but because that iniquity was never dealt with, they went back again. But this afternoon, Father, it shall be a permanent turnaround. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as many of us as are standing on our feet saying, God, never will I go back again. Lord, I ask that you will you will pour upon them the spirit of the living God. Let the fire keep burning in their souls in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed.